Matthew, at last. Yeah, We've absolutely. been planning this for a while, I know. but finally we managed to make it work. <laughs> it's been so great to get you in the BMW, the BCG E30. What I do you reckon? I love it. I love it. I love it, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you're driving and you can smell the fumes. You can yeah. smell the classic car feel. I love yeah. it. It's great. Yeah, it doesn't mean there's fumes coming out of this car. Just no, to clarify, no. there's no oil leak and there's no petrol leak. The car is okay. But I know what you mean. It has that classic car smell, yeah. doesn't it? And I think a lot of people say that to me when they get in the car. It's like, oh, the smell. Yep. And you the miss that. You miss yeah. that from like, you know. Yeah. yeah. And the weird thing is like, you know, because I used to own one of these in the 90s, right? And for me, it's like a time warp car. It's a time machine car. Because when I get into this one, it just transports me back yeah. to that car. Yeah. Because it, it feel, not only does it feel and drive as good as I remember it, but it does smell the same. Yeah. It's just very strange. And it feels heavy and yeah. clunky. And, <laughs> you know, it's got like classic car feel. And, That's oh, right. You just, yeah, I mean, every now and then, I mean, I, I was... You say about in the 90s, I'd only just been born in 99. Well, this car is older than you. See, that's the point. <laughs> and literally, it's the thing of, you know, we, we were having a discussion yeah. of, you know, they don't make cars like this anymore, yeah. but the pros and cons. Yeah. But every now and then you see a car like this drive past and it, it makes the hairs on your back of your arms stand up yeah. and you think, oh, God, yeah. look at that. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, another classic car. I mean, I'm in one, and if I see another one, I get excited. So that's really <laughs> weird, right? Absolutely. A brown car guy. Brown car guy. But anyway, let's get on to you. Let's let's do your origin story a little bit. But actually, before we do that, you, I, <laughs> I recently accorded you the tagline of the young man that grilled Mayor Sadiq Khan. I'll take that. <laughs> I'll t can I get that on a mug? Yeah, I mean we'll that, that, out. <laughs> that was brilliant. The, the people's question time. Yeah. And just, so tell me how that came about. How did that start? I mean, literally, I, I found out that the GLA was having the people's question time. Yeah. Um, and that happens, you know, every few months. Basically, it's the people's chance to ask yeah. our mayor of London yeah. what we want. Yeah. And so I said to, you know, I, I managed to get a ticket to go, and I went and. And I managed finally to get a well, question. Tell, before you get to that, tell me this. Did you go with a plan or did you go, let me just go there and see what it's about or whatever? Well, I, I had a rough understanding of what People's Question Time was about. Yeah. But fundamentally, the big talking point at that time was the ULES. Yeah. I mean, you know, everybody knows what's yeah. happening with the ULES. And so I wanted to go and I wanted to ask our mayor, because it's our mayor. We, the people, can choose to elect him and, and to, you Should know. Should I go up this road? This yeah, road? why not? Go up this road, yeah. Um, do you remember when that was? How long ago that was? It was, I think, April. April, yeah, I sounds think about April right. Time. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I wanted to ask, you know, why why aren't you listening to Londoners about yeah. the ULES? Sixty-six percent of people were against it in the consultation. Something like eighty percent of businesses are against it. it. Why aren't you listening to us when he's ploughing ahead with it? Um, and, and so, yeah, I managed so these, to get a question. So these question time events then, like you said, why aren't you listening to us? I think that's key, yeah. that's fundamental. Yeah. And the idea behind these sort of events is that he's supposed to listen, right? Yeah, he's, he's our mayor, yeah. right? And what I did is when I asked my question, I finished it off with saying, you know, this so is... So what was the question? What did so you my, ask? my question, we were talking about London's economic recovery after COVID. Yeah. And I sort of smelt the hypocrisy. I went, well, hold on. How can we talk about London's economic recovery yeah. when you're about to bring in the ULES, which yeah. is a tax on now, our businesses? Full, now, full disclosure, disclosure, just for people watching and listening, uh, he is a Labour mayor, you are a Conservative councillor. I am. Yeah. But even, even on a principled point, yeah. this is the wrong thing to do at the wrong time, and it's not going to have the impact. Yeah. His own report, he commissioned Jacobs to do a study on yeah. how much of an impact it's going to have said that the ULES will have a negligible impact on yeah. air quality. Yeah. So even by his own measures for £300 million of our taxpayers' money, this is not going to have an impact on air quality. So it's the wrong thing. You know, he should be cleaning up the London Underground, yes. which is where the real problems are yeah. with air quality, yeah. and not the great outdoors like this. Well, this is it. I mean, we are right... So where are we right now? So we're in Harrow. We're in yeah. Hatch End. This yeah. is my ward. Yeah. And it's just... It's clean. And right now, we, I should just tell everybody, it's this is technically rush hour. Yeah. This is fi it's 5.13. It's a quarter past five right now. Yep. And this is all of this is going to come under ULES. This is this is going to come under ULES. We've yeah. literally passed a couple of the brand new ULES signs. Yeah. We've got cameras just around the corner. Yeah. This is going to be the ULES zone. And, yeah. And 
where we started actually i'm building a brand new park you right. know for children and families right. to go to lovely and the other day i was there with an air quality meter and i yeah. measured it and it said good yeah but if you were coming back from the school run and you had a non-compliant car you yeah. paid 12.50 to go well there. i'm in a non-compliant car right yep. now i'm enjoying this drive we are just surrounded by green on both sides yeah the traffic is free flowing I will not be able to use this car without paying £12.50. Absolutely. We're literally coming, it's really good that we've come this way because yeah. we're coming to the border with yeah. Watford and, yeah. and Hertfordshire. Yeah. And that is the border yeah. where on that side of the border, yeah. you can drive whatever car you want as yeah. much as you want. Yeah. But here, there's apparently this meta, you know, this, this barrier <laughs> where air pollution doesn't dare come across. Look, That's ready, it. here we go. This is, yeah. this is the sign for Hertfordshire. Right. And ready? That's it. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. And then you can smell. So we are now technically outside of Absolutely. what is going to be Ulez, right? Absolutely. And you can wow, smell. Wow, it's completely the different. It's so different. <laughs> you can smell the air quality. You can smell the. It's fantastic. But just over that way, yeah. twelve fifty. Yeah. Bam! Pay for the Ulez. Isn't it amazing how air just stops? You go left air, here. Air, uh, you get some nice areas that we can. Isn't it amazing how air just stops? Oh, absolutely. Air knows when to stop. Has air been told that they have yes. to? Yes. Right. I, I mean, so, and that's so the go thing. back to the question time. Yeah. What was his response to your question? So so his, his response was, well, let me ask a question back to you. Yeah. You know, answer a question with a question. Yeah. Yeah. What's the price of a young child's life yeah. dying from air pollution? Yeah. What's the price of stint, uh, stinted lungs and things like that? And I thought to myself, well, according to you, it's £12.50. Because yeah. according to yeah. you, I can pay £12.50 yeah. and drive whatever car I want, yeah. and that's it. You yeah. can say nothing. That's right. And yeah. I, I wish, I wish I had said that on the <laughs> night and asked him that. Yeah. But, yeah, he, his answer to my question, which yeah. got one of the loudest applauses of the night. That's you can right. Watch, I mean, the video of it well, the thing got is it went millions crazy. of views. Yeah, it went crazy. This is how I found it. I know. You. I saw oh, your video. That's where we met. I, know, I saw your video. I saw yeah. this video, and I actually left a message on the video saying, I hope, because it was a protest I coming up. I hope this guy's coming And I hope this guy's coming, because I want to talk to him. You know. I reply back yeah. saying, of course I am. <laughs> no, literally, that video blew up. And I, loads of people messaged me saying, thank you for just saying yeah. what we're thinking. Yeah. You know, this is what we've been wanting to say. Yeah. And the fact that he couldn't even answer my question, he yeah. answered it with another question. Uh, you know, what's the price of a life? Yeah. And well, this is the his, reply well, is, well, according to him, £12.50. Let's, 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 let's tackle some of that, because yeah. this is his, his stock answer that he the has 4, for all The 4,000 children's 4, lives. The 4,000 lives that yeah. apparently are going to be saved, which we've discussed in other videos, that it's really just an estimated, extrapolated figure yep. that actually is a cumulative total of the extension of life. So it's not yep. actually 4,000 lives. No. It's the equivalent of 4,000 lives if you add on basically three years to everybody's yep. life at the yep. end, you know? Absolutely. But uh, There's been one death which yeah. has had air pollution on the yeah. death certificate. Yeah. One. But I get this a lot on my channel, for example. A lot of people like, you know, a lot of, I get a lot of support and a lot of people are like, oh, no, they really do say that, well, you know, you just want your cars and you don't care about people. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to, you know, you, we're breathing air right now. We're in this beautiful place. It's clean as you can imagine. Yeah. I grew up in central London. I grew up in Islington in the 70s. I can remember when everything was black, you know. I can remember you use the underground regularly, come home and this is disgusting, but you blow your nose and it would just be black. Yeah. You know what I mean? That doesn't happen now. The air is so much cleaner, right? Yeah, but yeah, yet, yeah. how do we respond to this argument that you know inherently we're still polluting the atmosphere, apparently, just by doing what I'm doing right now? I mean, the facts are the facts. And this is the thing this mayor doesn't do. He doesn't stick with the facts, right? When we talk about the ULEZ, it's not just like the classic car shows and all of that. Yeah. It's ordinary people getting about their day to day. It's the white van, you know, tradesmen. It's the parents doing the, sh the shifts, taking kids to school. Yeah. It's the, the grandparents who've spent their pension getting a car yeah. and then now are going to have to get another car. Yeah, yeah. It's and they thought that car would see them out. Absolutely. Yeah. It's ordinary people. Yeah. It's ordinary people. And the big thing that we've got to watch out with this ULEZ yeah. is the fact that the mayor at any point can change the conditions. Well, he did though, didn't he? I mean, that's the point. I also get a lot of this. Now, being a brown car guy, being a brown guy, a lot of people have this kind of accusation that they level at people like me is like well you voted to him uh, you know a lot of people yeah. somebody actually even commented is like oh doesn't your religion require you to vote for him let me just clarify no it doesn't that, that, that is complete and utter nonsense but people are like oh you might you have to vote no that's nonsense but in any case even if you did vote for him last time the reality was that even two months after that 
he said on his website that he had no plans to extend units. Yep. So your point about him changing his mind. And he's already said that he's not going to shift the goalpost, but yeah. I wouldn't hold your breath on that. But, he, but he's also already said that he wants to bring in paper mile. Yes, and that's the thing. No matter what, if you spend the money now getting a brand new compliant car, there is a very likely chance, I mean, we've seen it in the TFL yeah. papers, 2025, 2026, 2027, he wants to move to pay per mile. Yeah. Where you pay for every mile that you drive, no matter what car you drive. Yes. Electric, hybrid, yes. petrol, diesel, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So I'm sorry, but this mayor is taxing Londoners out of London. Yeah. That's the premise of what I asked in my question. You know, yeah. how is London becoming affordable anymore? Yeah. You're damaging its economic recovery. And as I said, he couldn't even be bothered to answer. And this is particularly pertinent to you. Like I said, I mean, if I may say so, you're 23? Still 23? Yeah, or 23. have you had a birthday since the no, last minute? 23. Still, still 23 years. I was about t you're about 10 years younger than this car. It's ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> and so, but for you, this is the future. It is. You know, London, you, London you're not is planning, our city. This is your city. You're not planning to leave. You're not planning to move anywhere else. Yep. You're looking to the future. Yep. And it's allegedly for people like you that he's trying to clean the atmosphere. But people like you are saying, no, we no. need to have a livelihood. We well, need to I, have, you know. London is so unaffordable, yeah. right? And the point is that this is another tax. It's another tax to live and just get about the city that we call home. Yeah. And frankly, there are so many other things that this money could be spent on, right? The London Underground, as we've said, yeah. some of the worst air quality in London. Yeah. A Cambridge study last year said that fragments of metal were going into people's brain and blood streams, yeah. Yeah. right? Why isn't the £300 million of taxpayers' money being spent cleaning up the London Underground, yeah. making that cleaner? Or how about the buses, TfL buses? Why not electrify the fleet? Yeah. I saw somewhere that they're not going to electrify it till 2034. Wow. Right? We need to electrify that literally But hang on, overnight. so how does that work? We're all being forced to buy electric cars from 2030, but, but yeah. the buses can still carry on not being and fully those, electric. And those buses, remember, they don't just do yeah. one journey a yeah. day. They run all day, every day, yeah. idling, going about doing these journeys, they are the ones where if you took that, you know, and electrified the fleet, yeah. you would make a huge, huge savings. Absolutely, especially in, in inner and central London, yeah. which, where, to be honest, once again, I reiterate, I've said this before, I don't have a problem with you, Liz, in yeah. those areas. No, in, the cent in central London, that is where the problem with air yeah. quality is. Yeah. If you look at all of the ratings, central London always is six, seven, eight, yeah. nine, ten out of ten. Yeah. Outer London is two. Yeah. Three, yeah. four if you're on a bad day, yeah, yeah. but normally it's one or even zero. Yeah. So I'm sorry, but it is not needed in outer London. It is just a tax on us getting about our normal lives. And in terms of younger people, I yeah. mean, if you can represent them for, for a minute or two. It's there, what there, I do every day. Which is what you do, right? But there is a, there is a sense that people do say, right, they're Going not involved. Here, we'll head back to, cool. to smog town, according <laughs> to, to you, Les. <laughs> Back, yeah. back into the I better, get, I, better, world. I better get the mask out. You know I was going to say. Yeah. But, but do they care? You know, there is this accusation leveled at them that they're not, that they're not affected, they don't drive, they don't care. Maybe they're even supporting the ULIS expansion. Is that true? Well, frankly, that's just an absolute lie. Young people, the first, one of the most exciting things when I was growing up was when you get to 17, you have this ability to get your driver's license. <laughs> and then you can drive Yeah, but car. does that still apply? Absolutely. Because for my generation, oh my no, God, absolutely. I could not wait, you yeah. know. Yeah. And that was the first day I got it, I passed straight away, yeah. I was like, got my car, that's it. Absolutely. You know? no, and it was one of those and it was freedoms. A, and it, it, was, it was freedom, it was a route to, to socializing, it yeah. was a route to getting new friends, to yeah. going places, to becoming the popular kid, you know what I mean? It was like all of these things, well, I, right? I can't talk for being the popular kid because I'm a local councillor and that's hardly, you know, you're in charge of dog bins and, you know, that sort of thing. But, I mean, frankly, cars are something which yeah. everybody you know, will have at some point in yeah, their life. Yeah. A lot of people, it's an asset that they take pride in. You yeah. know, they wash their car and keep it nice and clean and yeah. look after it. It's something that you feel proud of. And this extension. is the thing. I mean, I have this car. You've been looking at it earlier. Oh, yes. And I and I, I just cleaned this myself. I spent two hours cleaning it just now before we got here. And, oh, well, thank uh, you very much. No, no, very but no, no, I do that anyway. I will do that once a week yeah. anyway. I do it, and I do it myself. You know, I prefer to do it myself. Yeah. And, 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 you know, when we have these classic cars, people say, oh, you drive an old smelly car. We spend a lot of time, effort, energy, and money on these cars. Yep. You know, yep. we already do just to keep them going. Absolutely. You know, but we're also, I also feel the older cars are actually better for the environment because this car has paid its carbon footprint. Well, dues, hold on. You know? Remember that if your car is over 40 years old, yeah. 
regardless of how bad it may be for the yeah. planet, yeah. you won't have to pay the ULES. Yeah. You won't have to pay anything. You have ULES exemption. Because you are yeah. exempt. Yeah. So the I whole saw a hot ULES rod. argument is I, so backwards. I saw a hot rod the other day, actually a truck that would have been retro uh, restomodded and it had a dirty big great V8 engine in it yeah. belching out smoke and that's ULES compliant because it's four years old. This <laughs> is the point. The whole ULES debate well, this is isn't. Just, I know, it's just a tax on working class people. It's a tax on the parents trying to do the school run. It's a tax on those, you know, hard working people who cannot afford to get yeah. a new car. Yeah. And frankly, it is to cover up his financial incompetence. Yeah. Right? TfL was bust during the pandemic yeah. and received six billion pounds in government bailouts. Yeah. The government has kept TfL running, those trains and buses for all of us to use, yeah. because this mayor doesn't know how to add things up and get a level, you know, even balance book. Yeah. So I'm sorry, but he cannot tax us even more to cover his incompetence. To cover up his mistakes, yeah. He's, he's upped I, his share of the council tax, the mayor's precept, yeah. by over 50% yeah. in his time as mayor. I'm sorry, but we don't see the value for money in London anymore. And soon, people are going to be driven out of it. And the da- literally exactly. driven out literally of it. Literally driven out of it. And the damage that he's doing, that we've touched on how it's affected people, it's affected businesses, yep. it's affected people financially, it's affected, affected people trying to get to hospital to get treatment, it's affected the staff that's going to the hospital. It's affected people like me with these classic cars, you know. Yeah. And these, I mean, as you can see, this is a great car. We're enjoying the drive. It's a great, it's a mental health thing. It's, a, it's just a fun thing to be able to I do. Know, absolutely. And and to have to pay per mile or pay £12.50 to do something like this, yep. I think it's just well, really going to kill the entire in, car culture. In, in a couple more yards, we're going to come back across that yeah. border yeah. and just be ready to smell yeah. the air pollution. <laughs> uh, it's, honestly, it's ludicrous. I'm sorry, now, but it's a lie. Now, here's one of the problems. Now, Sadiq Khan is clearly not a car guy. No, that much although is a he does get driven round in a chauffeur-driven diesel Range Rover. Yeah. So That's the hypocrisy... Nice. I mean, diesel! Diesel. As far as I'm oh, aware, wow. as far as I'm aware, he's driven around in a chauffeur-driven yeah. diesel Range Rover, which is the worst kind of car for particular emissions. And also, he's being driven around in a Range Rover in central London. Now, I yeah. know that we have problems with potholes, yeah. but there's no need for a massive Range Rover yeah. in the centre of London. So, I mean, it, the hypocrisy of his mayoralty is just there for all to see. Is it an armoured car that? I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, I, sounds I would like assume it might so. Be. Yeah, so which, which makes then it is extra weight. Which makes it heavier, yeah, considerably so. heavier. So again, so he's not a car guy. So coming no. back to my point, is one of the problems that we have is that we don't have anybody at that level in governments and any authorities actually that are car people that actually understand this. They a understand the needs of the motorists and b understand the needs of the car enthusiasts community. For well, example. I think it's clear what we've got in Sadiq Khan is a mayor who just is out of touch with ordinary Londoners, yeah. right? Completely out of touch. He's the, the mayor who, you know, said there'd be no strikes, zero days of strikes on TfL. And under his mayoralty, we've had more strikes than the previous two mayors combined. Yeah. Oh, look, here we go. Just coming into the... It. Ready, ready, and... Oh, oh you can... <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny enough, it smells exactly, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. It's exactly so, the same. Yeah. No, no change I, whatsoever. I, I take your point yeah. about politicians and being in touch. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a local councillor. I was elected last year as a local councillor. And I'd like to say that I'm in touch. Yeah. I live in Harrow. I was born in Harrow. Yeah. I've grown up in Harrow. I know our local, you know, my local area. It's where I, yeah. you know, go to do my weekly shop. I, on that low level, you could not be more in touch because you yeah. are just a member of the community. Yeah. I totally understand that the higher up you get, go left, we'll head back into yeah. to Harrow. Um, I totally understand the higher up you get, the more disengaged you might become. Yeah, exactly. But there is nothing stopping you from re-engaging. Yeah. So I know incredibly hard-working MPs who spend their whole day... Yeah, go straight. You, let's, go, let's go right, why not? You, I know hard-working MPs who spend all of their time connecting with residents and their constituents, trying to find out what they want, what it is that are the matters to them. So that's the thing. No matter how high up you get, you can connect with your community. So what's and that's the what message, this mayor isn't doing. But well, what's the message that you've been getting regarding you, Liz, in, in particular? I am yet to meet anybody who I've had a discussion yeah. with who's in favour of it. Yeah. We, we understand the need to clean up air pollution where it is. Yeah. But it's not out here in outer London. Yeah. It's not here. Yeah. And also, this isn't going to do anything about it. 
his own commissioned report that now he says isn't the real report. You know, it's not the oh, real man, you one. You can't keep changing your mind on these things. This is the thing that was yeah, put out there. Yeah, the you goalpost, know? fake news, all of this sort of no. stuff. The one that I paid for isn't the one that I actually wanted because oh, it didn't say God. the results I want. That's what he's doing. Yeah, but that's he has, pre he has previous on that, though, yeah. right? <laughs> so I'm sorry, but. So, frankly, where, so where do we stand now? Do where do we stand now? What's happening well, right we now? We are a few weeks away from the judicial review. Yeah. Which this borough here in Hillingdon, yeah. my you know, our borough over yeah. there in Harrow, Bromley, Bexley, yeah. and Surrey County as yeah. well. We brought this judicial review, not on behalf of us, on behalf of all of London. Yeah. Right? We put our neck on the line, we put the money yeah. where our mouth is, and we actually got this. Yeah. And the judge, not only have we got this judicial review, yeah. but the judge has allowed in some of those reasons that this were excluded. Just, and this has just happened recently. Yes. Yeah. So our, you know, the fight what do you is think that growing indicates? and growing. What do you think that indicates? I think it shows that we're yeah. on a good path. Yeah. Now, I, I have no idea how the judicial review yeah. is going to go. Yeah. We're all, you know, it's a... Who knows? Yeah. But... I hope that we just get some common sense. Yeah. We look at the facts that this isn't going to do what it says it's going to do. We look at the facts that he wants pay per mile coming up next. Yeah. We look at the facts that Londoners overwhelmingly said no. Yeah. And his democratic role is to listen and represent Londoners. I hope that the judicial review throws it out and that the mayor backtracks and understands that what he did may have, you know, may have been turns out to have been unlawful. Let's see. Fingers crossed, because it will be a win for Londoners. It will be, totally will be, yeah, definitely fingers and crossed for that. And we can keep driving this beautiful car and do That's... more videos like this. <laughs> Absolutely, can't so, wait for that. You know, 5th well, of I... July, together, here we go. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that, definitely. <laughs> but, you know, regard... if it does, if it doesn't go in our favour, yeah. we, next year we have a mayoral election. We do, the 2nd it, of May 2024. 2nd of May it's in my diary. It's, I'm sure it is. Right. And, and, and I think it's very likely that, A, either he's not going to stand for that. Well, he, well, because he is. He well, he's saying, he he's saying he is. But if he loses the ULEZ, I see what you mean. I feel that he's not, because I feel that he's so unpopular now that at some point the Labour leadership is going to go, we're going to lose well, this if we put him there forward. Are, there are Labour MPs and Labour councillors coming out against the ULEZ. Now, they yeah, are being that's true, yeah. triple, quadruple, yeah. you know, pentuple, yeah. whatever the oople is timed whipped yeah. to support this. Yeah. In Harrow Council, we had two debates on yeah. the ULEZ. One on do we support it or not, and one on should the council pay for starting this judicial yeah. review. Yes. We gave the Harrow Labour councillors the opportunity to say what their residents were thinking and stand up. And both times, they didn't vote in favour, they didn't vote against, they abstained. They couldn't come up with an opinion yeah. because they know they're in a difficult position. They yeah. know that they want to say they're against it, yeah. but they are being whipped, absolutely whipped, to support this, yeah. and so they're staying silent, and that is utterly, that's utterly ultimately a problem, isn't it? But but in terms of candidates that are going to go up against Sadiq Khan yes. at this election next year, if he's standing or whoever yep. is standing, yeah, and we have one of our own, or from here and here, my own ward colleague yeah. Susan Hall, who was just a few months ago the leader of the Conservative group on the yeah. GLA, yeah. stood down as leader to stand for Mayor of London, and she's right. got through to the final three. Yeah. So I am absolutely supporting her all the way to be our candidate. Yeah. She is the only one who has grilled Sadiq Khan for the last however many yeah. years on the GLA. Yeah. She knows him through and through. Yeah. She knows the buttons to press, and she always knocks him off his pre-written script. <laughs> so, you know, Harrow is absolutely behind one of our own to be Mayor oh. London. I was going to ask you about what's your opinion on all three of the candidates, but it's pretty well, clear look, which one you support. Look, but... I'm, I'm a conservative. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, whoever gets selected, yeah. I will back, and yeah. we've got to fight this. And no, take I have Sadiq a problem Khan. with one of the candidates, though, with one of the uh, nominees. Um, I think it's Daniel, Daniel right. Korski, right? Right. Which I've got a lot of respect for somebody, because apparently he was a war correspondent, and as a journalist, for me, that's like that's like the top level. That's yeah. like, I got the greatest respect for people that do anything like that. And he's also said that he will cancel ULEZ and he's looking at other things like getting rid of 20 miles per hour. It's all good stuff. Yeah, yeah. But he has also said that he will bring in pay per mile. Now, I've I, got a fundamental issue with and that. And that is something which I really want to pick up with him. Yeah. So I'm actually going to a hustings, right. you know, and I'm going, if I get a question, yeah. that's my thing I'm going to ask. Yeah. We are fighting so heavily this ULEZ 
but for you to say that you're in favour of pay per mile yeah. is almost a kick in the teeth. It is. That's exactly what we're trying to stop. It is, yeah, exactly. So, exactly, yeah. fingers crossed we get some clarification on that. Another thing I'd like clarification on, because it would be good to find out about yeah. that, but another thing I'd like clarification on, because um, all three candidates, and not even them, but other candidates from some of the other parties and some independents as well, are saying that they will roll back or they will, can they will stop ULIS, is what they're saying. Yeah. However, if ULIS has already gone ahead, are they saying that they're going to roll it back? Because it's very hard yes. to roll things back, isn't it? No, because what, and this is something which Susan has said, and this is what I think a lot of the candidates are going to come to, what we need to do is realise, and actually there are cameras just here on these traffic yeah. lights, yeah. right? These were one of the first ones that I noticed. Look at those disgusting cameras. There they cameras. are. So, I mean, basically, what's going to happen with the cameras if the, whoever the mayor is says they undo the ULES expansion? Well, we'll give it to the police. They are ANPR cameras. Yeah. That's what they are. So what we need to do is realise that there's going to be cameras on lots of traffic lights, on lots of junctions all around London. Yeah. So by giving that system to the police, by working with the police, you can know instantly when a criminal or a car that isn't wanted to, you know, yeah. for further investigation drives yeah. past. Yeah. And it can trigger that alert on a police system for yeah. a car, you know, a, a copper to come. So, so there's pull a them positive over. use for them. That's the positive yeah. use. Yeah. So let's realise we spend three hundred million pounds of our own money, yeah. and if we undo the ULES. It's at least getting used to tackle crime, which tackle is the number yeah. one issue in London. If you speak to is, anybody, well, they don't feel thing, safe. This is the thing, isn't it? This is the thing. This is a fundamental thing that people talk about. You're talking about yeah. these saving these supposed 4,000 lives. Well, what about the fact that people don't feel safe walking around in London anymore? Yep. What about you're pricing women out of their cars yep. and then they kind of... It's too dangerous for them to walk home the late mayor, at night. The mayor talks about 4,000 lives. Yeah. Well, 2021 was the deadliest year on London wow. streets in its history, and that is under Sadiq Khan. Yeah. It was the bloodiest year, is what the papers yeah. said. Yeah. I'm sorry, but this mayor has failed on crime because the Met Police is in special measures, yeah. and he's yeah. policing crime commissioner. Yeah. So what we've got to do is spend taxpayers' money wisely, do the things that make a difference to people like you and yeah. me, Londoners, ordinary Londoners wanting to get about their day, and that's it. Your literal what job about, description is to make London better. Just to pick up on that, like you said, you and me, we're both Londoners, right? Yeah. What about the concept that Saudi Khan is actually not looking after our necessary requirements or whatever, but in fact that he's actually looking after the requirements of his mates in this club that he's part of, which is C40 Cities, right? Well, whilst he's been mayor, all he's done is write this book. All he's done is write this book called Breathe. Yeah. What I say is, give me a breath. <laughs> Seriously, this is such... A, it's just full of nonsense. Yeah. It's talking about the ULES and how much of a difference it's going to make when the yeah. facts are it doesn't. Yeah. Frankly, people would be better using it for firewood. <laughs> so I haven't yet bought myself a copy because no way am I wasting any money on that. Well, if you wait for Christmas, I'm sure it'll be in the... I'm discounted. sure it'll be in the clearance section. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. OK, it, so listen, let's get... Let's get I mean... This is going to be a little bit touchy for you, but from what I've seen of a lot of news reports and a lot of interviews, and you know, I watch Question Time and Newsnight and all the yeah. rest of it, you know, it feels to me like a lot of your colleagues in the Conservative Party have pretty much, you know, given in to the idea that they're not going to win the next election, that we are going to end up with a Labour government. In fact, when you see the Labour uh, uh, representatives, they're walking around with a swagger right yep. now. Yep, and it terrifies me. I mean, look, I'm not going to for one second say that what's happened has been great and hunky-dory and all mm. lovely. It's not. Mm. And mistakes have been made and, you know, people have owned up to that. Yeah. But what we've got to realise is this is a Labour opposition who don't have a policy of their own. When they do have a policy of their own, they change it. Yeah. You know, Keir flip-flops, flips and flops between this and that. He doesn't know what he wants. He gets told by Just Stop Oil yeah. with millions of pounds of donations to stop this and that, and then guess what he says? Oh, well, that's his idea now. He, you know, every policy they come up with, they roll back. I thought when he stood to be leader of Labour, he wanted to nationalise several, you know, yeah. big industries. Well, he did Now say he that. doesn't. Yeah. You know, I thought he was going to be a left-wing Labour leader, yeah. and now he's painting himself as some centre, middle ground Labour leader. But let's bring it back it, to order just... motive. Let's bring it back to motoring, because obviously, like, you know, we can discuss a lot of political stuff, and there's good and there's bad. And I know. Sides. It's all I do with all, know, all my life. I'm sure, seems. you know, and, I'm, <laughs> and the, like you say, the Conservatives had a, had a lot of major issues over the last, yeah. you know... Uh, the fact is, but, Labour will not be for the motorists. 
yeah, Labour this is, this were is, the This party. is my fundamental problem right now. Here, here in Harrow. I mean, before, I live in Brent, all, yeah. right? Let's touch on that. I live in Brent, and I can feel the difference. Yep. Like the potholes, like we're driving through Harrow now, right? Mm. The, I can see there's been an attempt to cover up some of these potholes here. Yep. In my area, I drive onto Kenton Road, yep. and there's a couple of potholes that if I drop the wheels of this car into it, God. they take my suspension now, off. Now look, it's similar here in Harrow, but let mm. me say why. We took over just over a year ago from Labour. 12 years of Labour run Harrow Council. Yeah. The budget for the potholes and the highways department destroyed. Yeah. £110 million worth of backlog of works that need to be done in Harrow, yeah. but no money to do it. Right? But they absolutely neglected so, so, the motorists here in Harrow. So it's very clear that they're not. Parties like Labour, and in fact, even the Green Party, for example, are very much anti car. Yep. Now, if they do get in, I mean, you know, forgive me for saying, but you're young, you've got time. But I'm like, that's it for me. I mean, you know what I mean? I like, know what, what you mean. What's going to happen? Mean. It's like the thing that I love the most, the thing that I think has contributed so much to humanity yep. and is something that I cherish so much, it's going to be killed off. Well, the joy of motoring, here, the joy of owning a car. I know. Here in Harrow, literally just there, yeah. we had Labour install a cycle lane right. that nobody used. <laughs> but it meant motorists were queuing up for yeah. traffic and traffic, polluting the air, you know, not able to get about their day to yeah. day. They brought in LTNs that we campaigned to get rid of because right. the public didn't want it. Yeah. Emergency services like ambulances being blocked yeah. by these stupid plant pots being put in the middle of the yeah. road and fundamentally making life difficult for drivers. So what people have to do is they have to scream and shout as loud as they can yeah. for what they want. Because what I said to Sadiq Khan and what I said to Harrow Labour and what I will keep saying is the fact that you have to listen to the people, the people who elect you, the people who brought you into this position. Remember that they can just as easily take you back out of it. Yeah. And so 2nd of May next year, I'm pretty sure that we will be saying so, to Sadiq Khan So the Khan, one big takeaway that you're saying here is very, because a lot of people say to me, what's the point of protest? What's the point of saying anything? What's yep. going to happen is going to happen. But yep. what you're saying to me, no. no, people should use, make their voices heard. Use your democratic right to mm. go and vote. So many countries do not have the democratic yeah, rights that yeah. you have. Yeah. Go and use it and do not miss a single election. Go to protest, peacefully protest. Yeah. So sorry about that. The camera is overheated. So a lot of hot topic of hot discussion. Topical debate it's a hot today. topic of discussion going on. But we're coming to the end anyway now. And I think that we've covered a lot of ground. And I think that well, I think I mean, that final point we've we, driven a lot of ground. We as actually well. have, and actually it's been a really nice drive. And considering and that it's been quality, this is been technically lovely. rush hour. Yeah. And yeah. we've just been able. We haven't stopped once in traffic. I know. It's been amazing. But I've got to thank you, Matthew. Thank no, you so much for welcome. taking the time. I know you're busy. You're I love this. Asking. This is something off my bucket list now. <laughs> Tick. Interview with the brown car guy in the beautiful classic. There class. you go. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, in conclusion, we're hopeful. We're positive. Yeah. We hope that you know we're going to either be able to delay this or we're going to get a mayor that's going to roll it back. Yeah. Fundamentally, people need to use their voice get out and about, come to the protests that are happening. You know, I always try and make the time to go there. Say what you want. Speak for the city that you want. And don't forget, next year you'll have the chance to elect a mayor who's actually going to put London first, make sure it's safer for everybody. Go and use your vote. Understand who you're voting for and why. And democracy is democracy. Every single person who is elected to office knows that they are elected by the people. It's what I said to Sadiq Khan listen to the people and that's what he's got to start doing and finally just let people know where they can find you if they want to get in touch i am on literally everything facebook instagram <laughs> twitter TikTok, on at m goodwin freeman you can email me both as a counselor and in my personal capacity i'm here in hatch end all the time so just come and say hello and we'll go for a lunch but just get in touch i love speaking to people and hearing what they want to you know what their views are um, I'm here for absolutely anybody and I love this. It's a passion for me. And you can always just Google the young man that grills Sadi Khan and you'll find that video. But thanks so much for watching. I want that on a mug now. I'm getting that on a mug. <laughs> thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Brown Car Guy. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please, please hit the like button and share this video as well if you can. And while you're at it, check out these guys who also sponsor my content. I am deeply grateful to them because it helps me to buy new equipment put fuel in the cars and yes buy a cup of coffee you can do the same just go here or right here on youtube just hit these three little dots down here and click on thanks make sure you're signed in first my content is free 
but this is how you can help me keep it that way. I may even send you a gift. Oh, by the way, watch this next. <laughs>